Did you know that two out of every three guys are going to experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? Yeah, you do. For me, well, I definitely know it. It was more like 25. Look, I wish Keeps had been around when I was younger because advancements in science meant that there are treatments that can help you combat the symptoms of hair loss and to help you keep the hair that you have. Which means it's too late for me. My hair is not coming back. But you don't have to be like me. You can stop your hair loss early thanks to Keeps. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA-approved drugs for treating hair loss. So you might have tried them before, but never at a price this low. That's right. If you were thinking, oh, this is some sort of medicine, it's going to be expensive. You couldn't be more wrong. Keep starts at just $10 a month. How does it work? Well, for one thing, no need to visit a doctor's office. Just schedule a quick online consult. A little bit later, a discreet package will arrive at your door and you can use it in the privacy of your own home. So if you're noticing that you're losing your hair, that's one problem that's not going to fix itself. Do something about it for a limited time. Go to keeps.com slash brain food or click the link in the description box below to receive 50% off your first order. And now today's video. There's an old engineer's adage that goes, if it moves but shouldn't, use duct tape. If it doesn't move but should, use WD-40. For nearly 60 years, WD-40, the iconic toolkit in a can, has been helping amateurs and professionals alike out of all sorts of sticky mechanical jams. In addition to its intended purpose as a penetrating lubricant and anti-corrosion agent, thousands of other uses have been claimed for this miracle liquid from removing chewing gum, crayon, and tape residue to repelling insects, attracting fish, and even treating arthritis. But can WD-40 really do all the things that people claim. Also, who came up with this product? And what is even in those distinctive blue and yellow cans? And most importantly, what does WD-40 even stand for anyway? As it turns out, the world's favorite multipurpose spray has a surprisingly dark origin, one that dates all the way back to the tensest days of the Cold War. On October the 4th, 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1, the world's first artificial satellite. In the United States, this feat was met with panic and dread. In addition to dramatically showcasing Soviet technical superiority, the little silver wall orbiting the Earth represented a genuine existential threat, for the same R-7 rocket that had carried Sputnik into orbit could just as easily drop a nuclear bomb anywhere in the continental United States with almost no warning. In response, the US could only field a handful of medium-range ballistic missiles like the Redstone, Thor, and Jupiter, which had to be based in foreign countries such as Britain and Turkey in order to reach targets in the Soviet Union. Thankfully, however, a solution was in development. The SM-65 Atlas Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. Designed by the Convair Corporation of San Diego, California, the Atlas was an advanced and innovative design, especially in the construction of its propellant tanks. In most rockets and missiles, the propellant tanks are a separate components suspended within a rigid airframe. In the Atlas, however, the fuselage and tank walls were one and the same and made of extremely thin stainless steel. The so-called balloon tanks were kept rigid by the pressure of the propellants inside them. This made the Atlas extremely light and efficient for its size, but also meant that it had to be kept pressurized at all times or else it would collapse like a fall balloon. The Atlas first entered service in 1959, eventually being deployed across 10 Air Force bases across the United States. As a strategic nuclear deterrence, these missiles spent the vast majority of their time sitting idle in their underground silos, exposing their stainless steel skin to attack by corrosion. To ensure that the nation's nuclear force would always remain in launch-ready condition, Convair began seeking a means of coating the Atlas's skin and preventing the infiltration of moisture. Luckily, just such a product had recently been invented by a small local company. In September 1959, a group of California-based engineers and chemists, including Ivan Norman, Norm Larson, Gordon Dawson, John Gregory, and Cyril Cy Irving, came together to form the Rocket Chemical Company, initially headquartered in Chula Vista near San Diego. Shortly after the company's founding, a U.S. naval commander and friend of the Lawson family asked Norm Lawson if he could develop a penetrating coating to protect machinery aboard naval ships from salt corrosion. Said coating, he explained, had to be stable and easy to store and apply. Lawson, who had a degree in mechanical engineering but not chemistry, nonetheless accepted the challenge and, to the dismay of his family, set up a makeshift laboratory in his home garage at 1048 Myrtle Way in San Diego's Hillcrest suburb. For months on end, Lawson experimented with dozens of mixtures of petroleum distillates, rejecting one formula after another is inadequate. Finally, on the 40th attempt, Lawson hit pay dirt, a concoction that efficiently displaced water from metal parts, lubricating them and protecting them from corrosion. Lawson turned over his formula 
popular to rocket chemical company President Cy Irvin, who dubbed it WD-40 for water displacement 40th formula. To test Lawson's mixture, Irving took a mixture to San Diego's Embarcadero docks, a major repair hub for tuna fishing boats. There he convinced Sam Crivello, owner of the tuna boat Sun Europa, to test out the new product. Crivello and Irving lifted the engine out of the Sun Europa, lowered it into the salt water, and left it overnight. The next morning, they doused the engine in WD-40, and to their utter surprise and delight, it started without issue. So impressed was Crivello with WD-40's abilities that he offered to buy a 50% stake in Rocket Chemical Company. He followed through on this promise and was elected to the position of treasurer. From the Embarcadero docks, word of the company's incredible new product spread quickly throughout San Diego, eventually reaching the Convair Corporation, who began buying large quantities of WD-40 to protect the skin of their new Atlas missile from corrosion. It wasn't long before engineers and mechanics at Convair began discovering new, unexpected uses for WD-40 from removing lipstick from collars to repelling ants. Perhaps inevitably, these employees began taking cans of WD-40 home with them to tackle all sorts of domestic tasks. Recognizing a potentially huge domestic market for their first and thus only product, in 1958, the Rocket Chemical Company made WD-40 available for private purchase in San Diego. From here, business accelerated at a rapid pace, with the company moving into a 3,500 square foot plant on Alvarado Canyon Road and expanding its distribution across the United United States and even overseas to Latin America, Australia, and Japan. A large part of this success was thanks to a change of packaging. While initially WD-40 was packaged in regular metal tins, in 1958, then-company president Norman Larson hit upon the idea of offering the product in aerosol spray cans, allowing it to be more easily applied to a wide variety of surfaces. By September of that year, the Rocket Chemical Company was turning out nearly 8,000 spray cans every day, while WD-40 was carried in over 500 hardware stores throughout San Diego. But it was two major world events which caused WD-40 sales to truly go through the roof. The first was Hurricane Carla, which for 14 days in September 1961 pounded southern Texas and Louisiana, causing widespread flooding. In response, the Rocket Chemical Company shipped 36 pounds of WD-40 to the Gulf Coast to help restore flood-damaged emergency vehicles and other vital equipment. Three years later, in 1964, the United States began escalating military operations in Vietnam, sending countless tons of corrosion-prone equipment into an extremely hot and humid environment. One soldier, who brought along a can of WD-40 to protect his rifle from corrosion, wrote to the Rocket Chemical Company claiming that their product had saved his life. In July of that year, the company received an official government order for 233,000 aerosol cans and 355-gallon drums of WD-40 for use in Vietnam, their largest contract so far. By 1966, the company had moved once again to a new 6,000-square-foot plant on Napa Street, and sales of WD-40 had reached nearly $5 million per year a nearly 1,500-fold increase in less than a decade. But in one of history's unfortunate twists of fate, the man behind the enormously versatile WD-40 formula would not share in his creation's extraordinary success. When Norman Lawson submitted his winning 40th formula to Cy Irvin, he was rewarded with a bonus of $500, equivalent to just over $5,000 to date. However, he received no company stock or other benefits, and thus received no part of WD-40's extraordinary profits. More tragically still, in official accounts of the creation of WD-40, Lawson's name was mixed up with that of company company president Norman Larson, leading to Larson being credited with the invention of WD-40, and Lawson being effectively erased from history. Either Norman Lawson died in 1967 at the age of 75, his historic contributions all but forgotten. Meanwhile, the Rocket Chemical Company continued to go from strength to strength on the legendary versatility of its first and only product. In 1969, the company officially changed its name to the WD-40 Company, Inc. This was for the simple reason that, in the words of then-company president John Barry, we don't make rockets. Barry, who joined the company the same year it changed its name, is a legendary figure in the history of WD-40, considered instrumental in the brand's enduring ubiquity and success. Barry's major contribution was to focus the company's marketing on WD-40's extraordinary versatility, turning it from a speciality product for the armed forces and aerospace industry into a ubiquitous household product found in nearly every toolbox and kitchen drawer around the world. To this end, Barry ensured that WD-40 was carried not only by hardware and automotive stores, but by grocery stores and corner stores as well, explaining, it's a numbers game. The more shelves we're on, the better the chance a buyer will pick us up, whether it's in hardware or sporting goods. 
He also encouraged customers to write in with unusual household uses for the products, which were then rolled into the company's advertising campaigns. By the 1970s, this list of non-standard applications had grown into the thousands and included, but was not limited to, Deep breath here. Loosening stuck zippers, removing crayon, lipstick and duct tape residue, protecting silverware from tarnishing, keeping pigeons off balconies, treating ant stings, polishing floors, untangling jewelry chains, cleaning stainless steel, hiding cracks in ceramic and marble floors, lubricating children's playground slides, restoring leather furniture, lubricating artificial limbs, restoring flooded automotive distributor caps, keeping bathroom mirrors from fogging, stopping squirrels from climbing bird feeder poles, removing scruff from marks from linoleum floors. I didn't make it. Attracting frish and treating arthritis pain. Oh, so close. Most of these uses have actually been tested and confirmed by the WD-40 company, particularly those related to lubrication, cleaning, and preventing corrosion. Indeed, one of the largest scale applications of the product is protecting sections of the Statue of Liberty in New York City from the elements. However, the company strongly discourages more unusual use of its products, such as treating ant stings, attracting fish, and treating arthritis on account of WD-40's toxicity. Which does beg the question, what is actually in the little blue and yellow can that can. Alas, Ivor Lawson's original formula was never patented, meaning that for 60 years the exact composition of WD-40 has remained a closely guarded trade secret. Only a handful of company employees are privy to the secret. The WD-40 concentrate is only blended in four factories in California, Louisiana, the United Kingdom, and Australia. And since 2018, Lawson's original handwritten notes have been securely locked up in a San Diego bank vault. The secrecy has inevitably led to rampant and speculation as to the Miracle Spray's composition, with the most commonly circulated theory being that the main ingredient of WD-40 is fish oil. Other more outlandish theories posit that the spray's distinctive smell comes from the vanilla extract vanillin, and that the secret formula contains, among other things, the goop from lava lamps and even sea otter semen. The truth, however, is rather more mundane, with the official Material Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS for WD-40, listing the basic ingredients as 45 to 50% low vapor pressure, alpha-atic, hydrocarbons, less than 35% petroleum base oil, less than 25% high vapor pressure, alpha-atic hydrocarbons, 2-3% carbon dioxide as propellants. In 2009, Wired magazine sent a sample of WD-40 to a lab for chemical analysis and discovered that the secret source is composed mainly of petroleum distillates including decane, nonane, tridecane, undecane, tetradecane, dimethyl naphthalene, cyclohexane, mineral oil, no fish oil, or otter semen in sight. Sorry. These ingredients make perfect sense given WD-40's abilities. Mineral oil is a proven lubricant, nonane displaces water, and decane, tridecane, and undecane protect the mixture from freezing at low temperatures. The latter compounds are also found in the pheromone secreted by cockroaches, ants, and the red-banded stink bug, possibly accounting for WD-40's distinctly sweet smell. However, the exact proportions of ingredients used in WD-40 remains known only to its manufacturers, ensuring WD-40's ongoing success. And what success it has been! In 2021, the WD-40 company, which employs nearly 500 employees worldwide and sells products in 176 countries, posted net earnings of $70.2 million. While over the past decade, its stock has gone up nearly 200%, more than twice the growth of the benchmark Standard & Poor 500 stock index. And in recognition of the company's major contributions to the aerospace industry, in 2014, WD-40 was inducted into the San Diego Air and Space Museum's International Air and Space Hall of Fame. All of this despite the fact that the company's flagship product has remained virtually unchanged for nearly 60 years, with one notable exception. Ironically, due to a 2013 California Air Resource Board ruling requiring all aerosols to contain 25% or less volatile organic compounds, WD-40 cannot be sold in the state of its creation in its original formulation. For this reason, regular cans of WD-40 sold in the remaining 49 US states and around the world are labeled not for sale in California. This does not mean, however, that there have been no changes at WD-40. In 2003, the company introduced the Big Blast nozzle to allow their product to be more effectively applied to large areas, while in 2005 it rolled out cans with a permanently attached flip-up smart straw, finally solving customers' number one complaint, losing the little red applicator straw. The company has also attempted to diversify its product line, launching a variety of products, including speciality WD-40 formulations for use on machine tools and motorcycles, 3-in-1 lubricating oil, lava hand soap, spot shot carpet cleaner, and 2,000 flushes toilet cleaner. However, the vast majority of the company's profits still come from Ivor Lawson's original secret formula with a thousand uses. A testament to the power of a good product marketed well. 
So the next time you reach for a can of WD-40 to loosen a stuck bolt, lubricate your bike chain, get incriminating lipstick off your shirt collar, or if you are so inclined, free up an arthritic joint, remember that the miracle liquid in your hand owes its existence to the very real threat of nuclear annihilation. Now there's a thought, even WD-40 can't unstick from your mind.